Hey guys, it's Sasha. Yesterday, Joe Biden said that the way to solve the economy is to tax the rich. I propose a minimum tax for billionaires of 25%, just 25%. There is a very popular narrative that the solution to everyone's financial problems is to tax the billionaires because they don't pay their fair share. You see it all over the newspapers, you see it all over social media, and it sounds good on the surface because it's easy to blame the failings of society, the failings of the government, and in some cases, the failing of the people complaining on somebody else. It's easy to point fingers and say, you know, it's the fault of that rich guy over there sitting in his ivory tower, if only we could get his money to redistribute among everybody else, then the society would be better off, everyone would have more money, everyone would be richer, and the people who continuously repeat this point do get a lot of attention. Because, you know, it sounds nice because there's a lot of people who would quite like to get something for nothing. There are a lot of people who believe that all the rich people are bad. They're baddies. They're rich because they cheated the system and because they stole the money instead of working their asses off day and night for years on end and being really good at what it is that they do. I know I'm not going to win the popularity contest by making this video and telling you the reality and how the numbers work and I know that I'm not going to get the views if I made that video but I am not here to give you fake outrage at inequality and to blame everyone's problems on the fact that there is some billionaire out there who is a lot richer. Unfortunately, this entire narrative of just taxing the rich is bullshit bullshit when it comes to numbers. So let's look at those numbers. Let's look at the data. First up, last year, the US federal budget spent $6.13 trillion. So that's $6,013 billion, or put another way, that's $6 million million. And it's important to understand this number because when people talk about rich people, when people talk about large numbers, large amounts of money, it doesn't seem to matter if you're talking about millions of dollars, billions of dollars, trillions of dollars. It's all the same. It all gets merged together. It all sounds like a lot. It's some kind of alien. It doesn't matter what the first letter is. So all the people who don't understand the numbers stand up and applaud. And just 25%. You know what that would raise? That would raise $500 billion over the next 10 years. According to Joe Biden, taxing billionaires 25% would raise $500 billion over 10 years. So even if you trust that number, that's $50 billion per year. And the total US budget is $6,013 billion. So this grand master plan would raise less than 1% extra money for the US government, but apparently it would solve all of the problems. And imagine what that could do for America. Imagine a future with affordable child care. Millions of families can get they need to go to work to help grow the economy. Imagine a future with paid leave because no one should have to choose between working and taking care of their sick family member. Imagine, imagine a future of home care and elder care and people living with disabilities so they can stay in their homes and family caregivers can finally get the pay they deserve. So all of these huge things that would cost the US government many hundreds of billions of dollars, potentially trillions of dollars, would be sold by just adding $50 billion a year from taxing the rich. But the biggest problem with this whole narrative is that the people who advocate this policy of taxing the rich don't seem to understand the most basic fundamentals about how money works, how those rich own that money, what kind of money it is, it's not even money, or how the taxation system works. Well, I actually think that they do understand it in many cases, but it's much better to ignore it because telling people that the rich are the bane of all of their problems makes you very popular. So here is the issue. The billionaires don't have a giant Scrooge McDuck vault in the ground of their mansion with billions of dollars stacked inside. Most billionaires, especially the popular ones that people like to hate, like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg, almost all of their wealth is in the stock of their companies. They own shares and they own options. And in most of these cases, they have owned those shares from the start or from a very long time ago when those shares weren't worth very much. Now, those shares are worth billions. So the net worth of these people is measured in billions, but these are unrealized gains on their assets. They don't physically have the money in their checking account. There was this article from ProPublica back in 2021 that got media attention because it said, look, Elon Musk only paid 3% tax and Jeff Bezos only paid 1% tax. And these numbers are generated, these numbers look so low because they're comparing the amount of tax that each of those people paid during the year to the increase in the value of their 
shares, not their income, the increase in the value of their shares. The two are completely separate things because the increase in the value of your shares is not your income. Sometimes these billionaires choose to sell their shares, in which case they do get income because you know they need cash for something. And a recent example was Elon Musk selling Tesla shares when he was buying Twitter. And when you sell your shares that you got via options, as in that case, you have to pay tax. And because options are classed as an employee benefit, when a billionaire goes and sells those options, they pay the top rate of income tax, which is currently 37%, but they also have to pay the net investment tax of 3.8% on top, and they have to pay whatever the state income tax is. Elon Musk was resident in California before he moved to Texas, so that's another 13.3% on top. So when Elon Musk exercised his options and sold those shares, he had to pay a tax rate of 54.1% on that income. But because he didn't sell all of the shares he owns, if you divide the tax that he's paid by his total net worth, it comes out a lot lower. Well, no shit. If you divide how much tax you've paid by the sum of the value of your house and your car and everything else, that will also come out at a relatively low figure. The unfortunate truth is that the top 1% of the richest people in the United States pay 42% of the total income tax paid in the country. The top 5% paid 63% of the total income tax. So when it comes to paying their fair share, the top 1% already pay almost half of the total income tax at the moment. And it's true that there are ways for rich people to avoid paying tax, because when you have a lot of shares or options in a company, for example, you don't have to sell them to pay your bills. Billionaires will typically use those shares as collateral for getting loans. And because the risk of them not paying the loans back is very low, those loans will usually come with a very low interest rate. So this naturally pisses a lot of people off because normal people People can't go and do that. And a lot of people will start saying that, you know, well, the rich should start paying a tax on their wealth. You know, every year they should go and pay 25% of their wealth over as tax or whatever, because they have the wealth but they're not selling the shares. So because they're not selling the shares, they're not paying their fair share of tax, right? Well, the problem with unrealized gains is that, well, they are unrealized. If you ever did impose this sort of tax, this sort of law, then in order to pay the tax, those billionaires would have to sell huge amounts of their stock to pay the tax because they don't have the cash. And if they did have to do that, if they did that, the valuation of the stocks that they would be selling would collapse overnight. The valuation of the entire stock market would collapse overnight. This would be probably the biggest stock market crash in history because one, there would be extreme selling pressure. The volumes that would be sold would be far in excess of what the normal trading rate is on normal trading days in the market. And two, the confidence in holding stocks would collapse. It would just disappear because it would become apparent that the US government can and will, whenever they feel like it, raid your stocks so that you can pay them tax on those stocks before you've actually made any money. And when that happens, all the pension funds, the IRAs, the 401ks, whatever, the savings of everyone in the United States and around the world would go to shit because all of that money is sitting in the stocks of those same companies. And the argument for taxing wealth is futile because well, it just doesn't actually work mathematically. Let's say last year, Elon Musk made 50 billion, made $50 billion because, you know, Tesla's stock went up. So his net worth has increased. So you go and tax him 25%. What happens if this year the value of Tesla stock goes back down? Does the US government go and borrow money to pay Elon Musk $12 billion back because his stock is now worth less? How does it work? And what happens to the small business owners who are the bread and butter of the US economy? Who are the people who underpin much of what happens in the US economy? What happens to the entrepreneurs working their socks off to build a business from scratch with huge risk? You know, the small business owner who has invested everything that they have all of their time taking the huge risk to try and build their business. They pay themselves often next to nothing because every dollar in the business matters. And they are trying to make their business succeed instead of the overwhelming majority of startups that end up failing. The business is growing, but the business owner finds it hard because, you know, money is extremely tight. They have a load of expenses. They have an office. They have bills. They have staff. They have tech costs. So there's no money left over to pay the business owner at the end of the month. And so that business owner pays very little income tax. 
But let's say they are a small media company. You know, the owner happens to own 100% of the shares of that company. And they have, I don't know, a YouTube channel, some websites. And you could argue that you can go and place a value on that business. You know, that website makes X dollars in revenue. You go and stick some kind of multiplier on it. And hey, presto, the business is worth, I don't know, $4 million, according to some IRS valuation. So the shares that the small business owner has are apparently worth, for example, $4 million. So please hand over 25% of that as in $1 million in cash because in the eyes of the people advocating these policies, that business owner is rich and they should be taxed appropriately. The business owner has 200 bucks in their bank account. They've been struggling. They've been borrowing money to pay their basic needs and they have no savings because all of their savings are invested in their business because they have taken on this huge risk. They employ people, the company pays employment taxes, they pay local business taxes, a fuckload of other taxes, and the employees earn a living and thereby contribute to the growth of the economy economy overall. But none of that matters. Nobody pays attention to any of that because the dweebs are out with the pitchforks and they want to tax the rich. The reason this example is a lot easier to understand is because it's smaller. It is much easier to relate to. You can imagine yourself in those shoes. The numbers don't have that many zeros, so it's easier to comprehend. But the principle is the same. And if you do a one-off tax on the rich that takes a whole load of their net worth and hands it over to the government, if we spend reality for a second and ignore the fact that this would literally destroy the US stock market and the US economy overnight. If we ignore that, you would have this one-off boost from you know being Robin Hood, taking from the rich and giving it to the poor via the government. I'm not sure the government is actually going to give it to the poor, but let's pretend. What does that actually solve? Well, it solves nothing because the same problem that the society and the government had before that tax came in will still be there next year and the year after that. And those problems don't get solved by just a one-off cash injection. The problem of the government overspending and having huge weightage, the wastage does not get solved by you getting a one-off bonus by taxing those particular people, except next year. You don't have any billionaires to tax because you have already taxed them. If you go and start taxing wealth, then you're already taking the money and you can't just keep taxing it because you've already taken it. And remember, unlike almost every other country, you can't even escape US taxes if you are a US citizen. Even if you move abroad, you still have to pay US tax. So those billionaires still pay US tax. And the reality is that when billionaires do earn their income, they actually pay a fuckload of tax on that income. I know it's unpopular. People don't like to actually say it. That's actually true. They often pay more than 50% as in the case that I was showing you earlier. And they pay at least 41% on things like the exercise of their stock options because that's how the US federal taxation systems work. In 2021, when Elon Musk sold some of his Tesla shares, he paid $11 billion in income tax, the biggest single payment in income tax in US history. And here is a really simple thing that most of the people who advocate these policies just don't understand. Wealth is not a zero sum game. A lot of the dimwits who talk about this, who pretend that they are some kind of experts, will tell you that you have to follow the money. If someone got poorer over here, it must necessarily mean that someone over there got richer. The rich just keep sticking more dollar banknotes into their pockets. That's how it works. And of course, you juxtapose that fact with the fact that there are some rich people out there in the world. And so you just put two and two together. And when times are tough, it's then easy to go and blame the rich because you just presume they must have accrued all of that money. Money. Well, if it's a bit less over here, it must mean it's a bit more over there. But let's say today, Amazon is a $1.8 trillion company because the share price is $180. And you know, Jeff Bezos has a big shareholding in Amazon. So Jeff Bezos has hundreds of billions of dollars as a result. What happens if tomorrow analysts think that Amazon is not as good a stock as they thought before? Everything else stays the same, but there's some problem with the Amazon valuation. You know, people don't think it's worth as much. And the stock plunges to half, $90. The company loses $900 billion in valuation. Who took the $900 billion? Who exactly? I know that some people short stocks, but in practice, who got the $900 billion? Who got richer when Jeff Bezos got a lot poorer? Well, the answer is nobody. 
and it works exactly the same in reverse, even if people don't like to admit it. Imagine two people who move to a forest. Their combined wealth when they move is zero. They have nothing. The GDP of their two-person village in the middle of the forest is zero. The trade volume is zero. But one of those two people is good at hunting. And the other one is a really good carpenter. So they start trading. The hunter goes out and hunts for food for both of the people. And they actually hunt a bit more so they can sell to other people in other villages and other parts. And the carpenter builds each of them a house. So now they each have a house that they live in, which is nice, and they each have food on the table. So the trade volume has gone up from zero. Their net worth has gone up massively from zero and their gross output has gone up from zero. And who did they steal the net worth from? Who got poorer at the expense of them getting richer? Well, the answer is also nobody because that is not how the economy actually works. I know it's easy to kind of simplify it down to a four-year-old level to try to tell you that, you know, if somebody else is out there that's rich, that must be because they stole all the money from somebody. But it is actually possible to get richer by adding value without having to take the money from somebody else. And just because somebody got rich doesn't mean that they did so at your expense. I know a lot of people are naturally resentful of other people who are successful. A lot of people love nothing more to bring someone down because that person is rich. A lot of people will spend a lot of their time doing precisely that. People are jealous. People will sit there stewing in their hatred, complaining about the rich instead of doing something to sort their problems out, to actually improve their own situation. And sure, there are definitely problems with the way that companies are allowed to set up a million legal entities and tax havens so that their accountants can route money in the most tax efficient way possible. The government 100% has to close loopholes that allow big corporations and rich people to avoid tax through complex trust, other systems. But this is a government problem. The fact that these things exist and have existed for decades is a government problem. The unnecessary complexity of the tax system in the US is also a government problem. And the government can and should address these problems instead of paying lip service to the family offices that donate money to their campaigns. But hey, I don't want to get into politics because I don't like talking about legalized corruption. There is a big problem with the US government and the Federal Reserve being fucking shit and grossly incompetent at managing the economy. Unfortunately, taxing the rich is not the solution and the rich are not the problem. But saying so wins elections, it gets you views on YouTube, and it sells newspapers. It creates a common enemy that can rally the masses. And it tells people that their problems are not actually their problems. They're not even the government's problems. They're actually the problems because there is somebody else out there. It's all somebody else's fault. And people like to hear it. They can blame someone. So they'll just keep saying it. 